I'm really dis disappointed today. Um, so this is, uh, I guess we're into the eighth day of the trying to get to Darwin. Um, a day ago, I was 150 miles from uh, Darwin and I chose not, I chose to anchor because I wanted to not come to this anchorage where I'm at right now at night. Uh, I guess what I didn't take into account enough or was having trouble estimating was how hard it would be to motor here. So it took me, I got up at, uh, I left the anchorage at 3 a.m. I got up at 2 a.m. I started picking up the anchor at 2 a.m. I was actually up before 2 a.m. Uh, and, you know, by 5 o'clock, I'm anchored here at Alcaro Bay uh, by Cape Don, the entrance to uh, the Van Diemen Gulf, which is the way to uh, Darwin. I, you know, Darwin, I can't imagine a town more inaccessible to a sailboat than Darwin is. That it's an upwind passage from all directions to Darwin. There's crazy currents to deal with. Uh, there's all kinds of hazards within the Van Diemen Gulf. There's whirlpools in the Van Diemen Gulf. They call them eddies. There's big waves. Uh, I saw cross-hashed waves today trying to just get into the Gulf. Um, I My timing was off by a couple hours. I needed to get there faster and take into account that I you're going to be slowed uh, two knots or more by the current coming in. And so... Eight miles out, I get start used going two to three knots, motoring, and I had to start motoring because the wind angle was bad, uh, and so uh, we got to the the almost to Cape Don, uh, you know, an hour after the the current had switched, and the current's like is with me, but the problem is the current is with me; it's against the 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 wind. The wind was higher. Uh, at that time, that was supposed to be the low wind time of day, but that was actually the higher wind time of day. So uh, the forecast was wrong. I was a little bit late. Um, you know, the the pole for the generator that's not there started banging in the square waves. Um, you know, maybe we could have gone through, pushed through, but. I had a half night's sleep and I didn't I didn't have my normal sleep schedule that I was having on the offshore passages because uh, I felt like this was maybe closer to land but maybe I should have been doing that during the day or during the night um, and then it, it, it was pretty obvious that we're gonna have to motor for like 20 hours and be uh, be happy if we get three average three knots um, so from here is, I think it's almost 120 miles, 110 miles. I think I underestimated how close this is. I thought it was only 90, but it's, I think it's more like 110, especially the way that we're going to take it um, because we can't give up uh, our, our westing, right, until we get southing, right? So otherwise we get thrown into Cape Melville or into not Cape Melville, but the, the Melville Island. And, you know, that uh, it just is very complicated and you need some sort of ideal set of weather conditions that I don't have time for to wait for. Uh, so I just need, I think, more time. So tomorrow we're gonna see what we can do. One of the things I noticed when I was anchoring here, there were a couple of sailboats anchored here. Uh, probably having the same problems that I am uh, or maybe they're just uh, on a cruise from Darwin and surprised at how hard it is to get back um, it is that it, it seems like the current doesn't run very much through these mangrove swamp these mangrove bits in uh, the Croker Peninsula or Crocker Peninsula I guess it's about crocs anyways this is I mean, this is the difference between um, Australia and the U.S., right? So the Van Diemen Gulf would be a wonderful place to sail if they had a canal 
on the, the peninsula, the thin part of the peninsula, and I think it's only three miles that they would have to have a canal. So, in, and this is like flat mangrove land, right? You know, it's like Louisiana. Louisiana has like uh, little canals everywhere, right? Industrial canals everywhere. All they need is a three mile canal, and that would allow you to get on the south side of the Van Diemen Gulf and do a beam reach back and forth, back and forth beam reach. Wouldn't have to be stressed out about all these currents. Wouldn't have to be going upwind for hundreds of miles, right? You have to go upwind for over a hundred miles to get to Darwin from any direction, right? And this is the first town in 400 miles, right? But the cheapo loser Australian government cannot build a three mile canal that will make it much more accessible to commercial and uh and uh, uh pleasure traffic uh but instead we have to wind around this mangrove peninsula for hundreds of miles go upwind for over a hundred miles deal with crazy currents for over a hundred miles because we cannot disturb the crocodiles it's, it's just absurd. Um, it's And it, it makes me mad because Jan and Sophie are getting on a plane. They're going to arrive in Darwin before I'm going to arrive in Darwin. Uh, if, I, if I arrive in Darwin before them, they will not be able to join my boat because of the xenophobic New Northern Territory government that makes me do an inspection, which they have to arrange for and all this other stuff. And we just have to wait for it before I can enter a marina. Even though boats that I spent time in the marina in Queensland with, and I've been in charge, I've been checked into this country for over a month, they can go straight into the, the marina. So, but I can't because I've ever been to a foreign country. You know, and I'm getting all this, this, these bogus things about me not notifying the the border force that I'm coming. Yeah, I told them a thousand times. I told them over and over I'm coming to Darwin. Over and over. And they pretend like, oh, well, we don't communicate with our different cities because they're too far away. We don't have the internet. We don't have computers here in Australia. We don't we don't know how, what, how to build a canal or a road. And so anyways... You know, the the vast underdeveloped wilderness the, that the Australians have screwed up uh, has defeated me this time. And that's the reason why I'm not going to see Jan and Sophie. I guess I should have spent more time thinking about the problem of entering Darwin. I guess it didn't occur to me that the only major city after Cairns, the biggest city after Cairns along the coast is inaccessible by sailboat. Inaccessible by boat unless you can go 20 knots. That it's upwind in all directions. I could go around Melville Island, upwind. I go to, the, I go to this side of Melville Island, upwind, up current. It's ridiculous. You have this vast continent with rivers everywhere, and you build a city in the most inaccessible location on the continent. Anyways, so tomorrow we're gonna embrace the suck some more, and we're just gonna motor, and we're gonna make our two knots, our three knots, and get every little freaking mile. I'm gonna sleep a full night's sleep tonight. And we're going to fight and claw. And eventually we're going to get to for this godforsaken city of Darwin, Australia. The only freaking city anywhere close to the size of Cairns in a thousand miles. Subscribe. When I say the size of Cairns or the size of Darwin, I mean the size of Lafayette, Louisiana. All right. As you can hear, the engine is on tonight uh, because we have the favorable current uh, and we are going to take advantage of it to get uh, as south as possible uh, because 
it's really hard to get south if the current's against you and the winds are against you. Right now, we're in a groove. Uh, we got a favorable current pushing us south, and that's the most important thing to getting to Darwin. I thought we were not gonna get to Darwin today. I got up early, picked up the anchor early, uh, and even though the current was not with me, I had tried it with the current with me last time, and that meant big waves. With the current against me, uh, it's wind with current. Uh, I was able to make some progress further south than I did, but then eventually, uh, it towards the, the height of the current, it, it was actually pushing us back. We could get no southing whatsoever. So I just, I just drifted back, uh, back to the anchorage, which kind of has a low current, uh, and then waited. Uh, waited for it and uh, I actually left like an hour before the current was supposed to turn uh, and I was a little late to be honest I could have been there earlier you could you could see the great difference in like the wave heights and the way they were acting but I was able to pound through uh, you know if you can't if I can't reach Darwin there's no alternative but going offshore to Indonesia. There's absolutely no alternative. If I can't reach Darwin, and this strait pushed me back twice prior to that, because Darwin is the least upwind place left in Australia with a town. There's no other town in Australia that is less upwind than Darwin. And if I can't get to Darwin, I can't stay in Australia. So. I was thinking, okay, maybe we have to do the the uh, boatyard in Lombok, you know, maybe I have to sail to Kupang. And of course, Jana and Sophie are coming to Australia to Darwin right away. But if it's impossible, it's impossible. But thankfully, getting there early uh, as the current changed before the, the, the uh, wave heights got too uh, enormous and, and too uh, obnoxious, and then once we got through the Dundas Strait, the waves laid down. The other thing that was good today is I think the winds were slight as they were forecast to be yesterday, but they weren't. I can feel now the winds are picking up a little bit uh, and you know, maybe our magic period of, of going south is gonna be not last. Definitely the current's gonna switch on us uh, at nine o'clock. So it's about 6.30 now. So we're about mid current. So we have like the, the height of the current. Um, and we just want to get as south as possible. And then there's like a, a peninsula that you have right before the Adelaide River. And uh, then we'll do like a beat rage close hauled uh, once we get south enough to do that. But we, we're not south enough to do that at the moment. And really most of the distance to Darwin is south, right? At this point. And there was no way to make it less south uh, because we had to go over these northern points to get to Darwin and in either direction. I was even thinking uh, there's like a, a river that separates uh, the, the, let's see, the west side of Melville Island uh, and thinking that may be the only other alternative. Like before I try to, before I sail to Indonesia, I'll go uh, sail a hundred miles to get to that river and Probably because it's a river, there's not going to be much wind, uh, not much waves, so I should be able to motor. There may be big currents, tidal currents, but uh, I could anchor in the river when there's an adverse current and then pick up the anchor right before the current changes, motor down and do that. But that would be a struggle. That would be days, days, not one day, right? And, you know, if you look at the map, I should only be one day away from uh, from Alcorn Bay where I was. I should be just one day from um, uh, from Darwin, but it just doesn't work that way. I mean, it's just I I I can't remember a place more harder to get to uh, on a sailboat. I just think I think the other thing from this is like. It's just the fundamental problem of Australia is there are no towns. There's no no settlements, right, with people who eat food, drink water, and have fuel. There are no places because there's nobody there. And so, you know, 
if Horn Island is the last non-downwind location or, or Gove, maybe we should have stopped at Gove and then went offshore. I don't think Gove is a port of entry, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, then there's, you know, it. you can't refuel if there are no settlements, right? There are no towns, there are no, there's no way to refuel, right? Uh, there's no way to resupply anything without towns. So to stick around Australia while you're running low on supplies, running low on fuel is just, is untenable, right? You can't do it. Um, now you can hope you get a wind change or you can tack around, but quite frankly, no, it's not, it's not going to work. Not, not on this boat. Maybe if you had a better upwind boat than I do, you could do it, but not on this boat. And I, I should have thought about how that last leg of Darwin was, was upwind. And I had no idea about the current situation or the tidal situation that, that was failure of my thinking and research, I guess. Uh, but it's, it's really bad. It's really strong currents, really high tides, probably the, the, the biggest tidal range in all of Australia. So, uh, that, you know, it, it, it makes it just almost impossible uh, to do. Uh, so, luckily today, it seems like the, the Van uh, Demon Gulf doesn't have any waves in it. It's just like, uh, it's like a pond almost. It's, it's uh, just really lucky. I think we got lucky on the weather conditions today versus yesterday. Yesterday, I think it would have been not so calm because it was just a little stiffer, but you know, conditions can change. And I believe that these conditions are not going to stay, stay. So typically, uh, the forecast they have is that there's going to be light winds in the afternoon till early evening and then as you get into the, the wee hours of the morning, we're going to get heavier winds, right? Which means that it's going to be harder to go south, right? So we have to get all this south in while the current's with us, while the winds are light. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to slow down to, to nothing, potentially, uh, or going backwards, right? And so. We want to get a sailing angle that we can we can uh, you know sail past at least Cape Melville, uh, but you know or uh, not Cape Melville but Melville Island uh, with the North Channel. But uh, my preference would get f further enough south that we could get behind uh, the peninsula for the Adelaide River and do the Southern Channel because uh, it's all south from there too. And there's also a current through those channels, so we need to uh, pay attention to those currents. And so we might need to anchor behind uh, the Adelaide Peninsula uh, to, to just uh, time the currents a bit better. All right, subscribe. All right, so we're uh, this morning here. It was a long night, uh, but it was, a, it was a good night. Uh, we had no wind uh, when we had that southbound
know what your haul speed is based on your knot meter. Um, mine is poorly calibrated, but if it's a, it, mine is like a one and a half. It's like 67% uh, of the actual speed. But if you know what it, what it is when you're hitting hull speed, you can push your boat to that hull speed. That's as good as you can do. And then, uh, so that's six and a half for us, I think. And then you subtract what you're doing when you're hitting hull speed and your speed over the GPS speed. And right now it's like it's about two, which is above what it should be. So, uh, so they say maximum current uh, for the not this channel, but the one uh, parallel to us is four. I don't think we're going to be in here for four, but you know, if we stop to zero, then, then we're going to end up turning around and, and, and going back out. The alternative was to wait like um, eight hours uh, for the, the current to turn and then go through. Uh, we we got slack water and then we'd have a few. because the winds are really force five for it right now. Uh, so, you know, my plan was to get to these channels and then go south and take the southern channels because I need some southing too, uh, as well as westing. But uh, because the winds are so stiff right now, it doesn't seem like a good time, even though the current, we do have a favorable current pushing us down. It's still not a great time and, and of course, 